Well, residents in many parts of Gauteng were woken by an estimated 5.0 magnitude tremor that hit large parts of the province this morning. The mini quake, which lasted for a few seconds, was felt as far as Pretoria at about 2.38 a.m. While the full extent of the tremor is yet to be detailed, the epicenter is believed to be near Katlehong in the East Rand. Uh, the U.S. Geological Survey says the earthquake has struck about 10 kilometers below the surface of the earth. Well, let's speak to the Council for Geoscience. Joining me now is Willem Minkis, who's the acting executive manager. Willem, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us on the weekend report. Initially, uh, the, the tremor was reported at 4.5 magnitude and now we have 5.0. Is that something that happens often in the recording of tremors and earthquakes? Thank you, and, and good morning, good morning, and to the viewers as well. Um, so, as the Council for Geoscience, we've got uh, seismic networks deployed throughout the country, especially in the Johannesburg region as well. Um, so, the information that we collect, uh, it's at a much denser scale, uh, as opposed to, you know, some of the international bodies that do record earthquakes as well, such as the USGS and others. Uh, so, typically, when we do the analysis of these earthquakes, uh, we can confine the information much more to a, to a local scale. Uh, so we can confirm that indeed the earthquake did occur this morning around uh, 2.38 a.m. Uh, and uh, following our analysis uh, of, of the information that, that we've collected uh, on a real-time basis, uh, the magnitude, uh, we've calculated is a magnitude of 4.4, which is still a relatively, you know, moderately large uh, sized earthquake, uh, seismic event. Right. Uh, talking about how many times South Africa in a year experiences seismic events, this does seem to be quite a, a much higher number considering what we've experienced before. Talk to us about that, just some of the trends uh, that as a country we generally experience when it comes to seismic shifts. Yes. No. So, so South Africa generally uh, was used to believe to be relatively aseismic, so... Uh, typically not uh, um, experiencing the same quantum of earthquakes typically as what you would uh, in other parts of the world. Uh, however, it's mainly based on our geological setting uh, uh, as a country. Uh, so we are what we call in, on an uh, intra-tectonic plate uh, setting. Um, however, we, we actually do experience quite a lot of seismicity in the country. Uh, even on a daily basis, we've, we've got a couple of hundreds of, uh, of seismic events per day in the country, uh, although a lot of them are really small and, and imperceivable uh, in terms of feeling, feeling these seismic events. Uh, but we do see from time to time, such as the, uh, the case in point in this morning, um, larger se uh, seismic events that, that can be felt and perceived. Uh, so they do come uh, every now and again. Unfortunately, we can't uh, with, uh, with certainty or to any uh, uh, extent really predict as and when uh, and to what size they, they, they would occur. Um, but we do monitor the activity and, um, you know, as and when they happen, we can, we can determine the locations and the sizes of these seismic events. Mm. Now, we've been seeing on social media, um, villain people posting some of the structural damage that has been caused to their homes. We're seeing cracks lining up walls all the way to the ceiling, um, glass structures broken to pieces on the floor. Um, thankfully, though, it doesn't seem that any injuries or deaths have been reported so far. But I'm just wondering that 4.4 magnitude, if with the damage that we're seeing, it correlates Yes. Now, you, you would expect um, larger seismic events such as this one that uh, could incur some structural damage, especially to uh, typical residential structures or, or smaller structures. Uh, so as a country, we do have uh, our national building regulations and building codes uh, that do take into account the regional setting of our seismicity in the country. Um, typically, you know, as, as you, you can appreciate, you know, once you start building things such as large nuclear power stations or big infrastructure development, there's a lot more investigative work that goes into determining the level of seismicity that those structures have to withstand. Uh, but there is definitely a level of uh, minimum requirements uh, to some extent uh, that, that has to be taken into consideration when building all types of infrastructure uh, in the country. 
Um, so, so definitely you would expect, you know, larger seismic events as uh, the one that occurred this morning uh, that might inflict some level of structural damage, uh, especially to houses. Mm. Now, you mentioned that pre uh, predictability is very difficult on your end in, in terms of predicting trends and the likes. Um, but I wonder, as a word of caution, I suppose, to our viewers, what sort of actions they should familiarize themselves with in the event, you know, larger sort of seismic activities become a common occurrence. Yes, I think, I think um, general public awareness is, is definitely something that's, that's maybe a little bit lacking, <clears throat> especially because we are not uh, seismically active that much to an extent that we've experienced this morning. Um, I think other countries such as J Japan and, you know, the recent uh, events we saw in Turkey, uh, they, they experience earthquakes on a much more regular basis. So I think the broader population is, is much more aware on what to expect and, and how to react in the events of, of seismic events. Uh, but definitely um, we do get these ones infrequently uh, every now and again in South Africa. Um, so I think as, as and when they do happen, it also allows us to, uh, you know, to become more aware of these uh, geological hazards and, and what to do in the event of, uh, of seismic uh, occurrences. Mm. Uh, so typically some of the basic things that, that we usually advise the public uh, to do when, when seismic events do occur is, the typical things of, you know, uh, if you can, you know, get out of your house uh, or, you know, at least get in underneath a table or a bed or something like that until the uh, the seismic event subsided. Uh, and then after that, you'll have to assess, you know, do, do you observe any, any damages or any immediate threats uh, in terms of, you know, walls that are cracked and things like that. Right. And then just in terms of topography, I mean, we, we mentioned that the epicenter was out in, 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 in Katlehong near the East Rand, but, you know, shock waves were felt as far out as Pretoria. Are there certain areas that are generally more sensitive to seismic shifts and, and tend to see more seismic activity? So, so historically, we know the mining regions of South Africa is, is one of the areas that experiences uh, um, slightly more seismicity than the rest of the country. Um, but then we also have other regions that, um, that do have what we call uh, tectonic seismicity. So that's related to the geology and regional, you know, almost global stress changes in, in the earth uh, that, that generates these seismic events. Um, but it is not uh, untypical to um, to have a earthquake in a specific location, and then it's it's widely uh, felt and and you know perceived by uh, by people uh, either even quite some distance away from mm -hmm. the epicenter instances. Uh, and the main thing around that is again it's based on the geology and you know how these energy waves, so to speak, you know propagate throughout the earth. Uh, so in some instances, uh, you'd recall the earthquake that happened around 2016 in Botswana. Um, you know, actually most of the perceived felt uh, uh, and damages of that earthquake was actually in the Durban region uh, and not necessarily in, in Gauteng and Johannesburg at that point in time. And that's purely based on the geology and how these waves, you know, sort of move through the earth and, and uh, you know, causes damage. Uh, and in some cases, it, it doesn't cause damage as well. Well, fascinating, the science of it all. Thank you so much, Willem, for coming on to our program and, and sharing all your insights with us. It's been very helpful. That was uh, Willem Megis, who's the acting executive manager, talking to us there about that uh, tremor that was felt in the early hours of this morning with a magnitude of 4.4. That's according to the Geoscience Council of South Africa.